Good evening. Hello and welcome. You're with the news today, Wednesday night. Your destination news. Newsmakers talking points are big talking point. Two of them or three of them. As the election commission ensured a level playing field as the first phase of campaigning ends, can Rahul Akhilesh Yadav stop the Modi juggernaut? Also, a state that has been forgotten but must not be forgotten and we will not forget it. Manipur, how will it go to the polls on Friday? All of that and much more as always on the one show that brings you the news without the noise. Let's get straight tracking to the nine headlines at night. Countdown to the 18 Lok Sabha elections officially begins. Final day of campaigning concludes. 102 constituencies across 21 states and union territories are set to vote in the first phase on Friday. Rahul Gandhi keeps up the suspense on the Congress's Amethi plan. The Wayanad candidate says a final ca call on his candidature from Amethi will be taken only by the party's high command. Sanatan showdown intensifies. Congress with Priyanka Gandhi now steps in, lashes out at Prime Minister Modi, claims Modi is falsely claiming that Congress is anti-Sanatan, says Prime Minister should focus on rising inflation and unemployment. Tamil Nadu ahead of the elections, a language war reignites. The Prime Minister rejects the DMK's Hindi imposition charge, claims it is MK Stalin and company who are politicizing the Tamil language. Congress versus left battle heats up in Kerala after Rahul Gandhi questioned why no ED action was taken against the Kerala Chief Minister. Pindrai Vijay encounters Rahul, says why won't he take a stand against CAA? Election Commission halts Bengal Governor C.V. Ananda Bose's proposed tour to Kuch Bihar, says silence period has begun. Governor's visit will violate the code of conduct. Elon Musk's Twitter responds to an EC diktat, takes down political posts on the Election Commission's order, but says it doesn't agree with this and advocates for freedom of speech and expression. Chhattisgarh Naxal encounters sparks a BJP versus Congress face-off. Former Chief Minister Baghel accuses BJP of fake encounters. Is forced to clarify later, says BJP claiming Baghel downplaying the operation. Ram Lalla's idol's first Surya Namaskar after 500 years. Ram Mandir witnesses historic Surya Tilak. Hundreds throng the temple town on the occasion of Ram Namdi. But the big story that at the moment is our top story. Campaigning for the first phase of the 2024 Lok Sabha polls has ended this evening. The first phase voting, remember, takes place on Friday, a seven-phase election that begins on Friday with the largest chunk of constituencies, 102 constituencies across 21 states and union territories will vote in phase one. States like Tamil Nadu will be voting entirely. 39 seats in Tamil Nadu are the largest chunk. So that's, uh, remember, what's going to happen on Friday, but ahead of that, the Election Commission, which is expected to supervise the elections in a neutral manner, finds itself in the eye of a storm yet again. A big row has erupted after Elon Musk's Twitter responded to the EC diktat. According to Twitter or X in a statement, it said it was withholding some posts of Indians where political speeches had been made from politicians, political parties and candidates after the EC ordered them to take them down. Despite reservations, X said it has complied with the order, but has said that it was the wrong thing to do. Twitter says it has informed the effective users about these measures. The EC ordered uh, Twitter to take down select posts of YSR Congress, Aam Aadmi Party, N. Chandrababu Naidu, and a Bihar BJP Deputy Chief Minister Samrat Chaudhary for alleged violations of the Model Code of Conduct. Uh, the Election Commission had issued directives to delete certain posts from political platforms. Uh, one of those posts was about electoral bonds. I think the Election Commission is well within its rights. The, as an electoral election regulator, the Election Commission is incumbent upon the Commission. It's incumbent upon those people to ensure free and fair elections happen. It also is incumbent upon them to ensure that whenever somebody breaches the model code of conduct, they should be hauled up. 
and that includes hate speech, that includes religious references, that includes absolutely crass, vulgar statements. So which is why it's very surprising that the Election Commission chose to get a tweet deleted which raised the issue of electoral bonds. Now all of this, of course, is coming against the backdrop of growing concerns over whether 2024 is actually seeing a level playing field. The Election Commission has been repeatedly asked this by the opposition parties in particular. So today, a month after the announcement of the Lok Sabha polls and the Model Code of Conduct, the Election Commission actually put out some details. It claims in an action taken report that approximately 200 complaints have been lodged by different parties. 169 of them, they claim, have been addressed. The Commission also announced plans to enhance its vigilance as the election process progresses. In a detailed action report, the EC cites several significant interventions and FIR, they say, was filed against Union Minister Shobha, Shobha Karan Laje, North Bengaluru a candidate for making unverified claims about the Bengaluru cafe blast. Notices were also issued to the BJP's Dilip Ghosh for his derogatory comments regarding Mamta Banerjee to Congress members Supriya Srinath and Randeep Surjewala uh, for disparaging comments about Kangana, Ranaut and Hema Malini. Surjewala, remember, has been suspended from campaigning for 48 hours. Another FIR was filed against a DMK's Anita Radhakrishnan for derogatory comments about Prime Minister Modi. The EC has also today stopped a planned visit by West Bengal Governor Ananda Bose to Kuch PR, deeming it a violation of the Code of Conduct. But is this enough? Do we really have a level playing field at the moment? Should the EC make all its takedown orders public? Has the EC been doing its duty as a neutral umpire? Joining me now, right at the top of the show, two uh, former Chief Elections Commissioners, O.P. Rawat and S.Y. Qureshi, join me. S.Y. Qureshi, the Election Commission says, look, we've received 200 notices across parties. We've addressed most of them. But the concern still remains. Is the Election Commission doing enough to ensure a level playing field or is the government still have a huge advantage uh, when it comes to the way the Election Commission functions? Well, I saw the press release of the election commission uh, uh, with facts and figures and which clearly showed that uh, the election commission has been very prompt in taking action. In fact, it has taken more action against the, uh, on the complaints of the opposition and um, uh, BJP perhaps uh, may have a cause uh, for complaint. So, uh, prima facie, it seems that the election commission is trying to be very transparent, very quick, very prompt. And I have uh, hopes uh, from them seeing uh, this notification. Okay, so you are seemingly satisfied. O.P. Rawat, do you share uh, Dr. Qureshi's belief that the EC is being proactive, is, being, uh, is ensuring a level playing field, is taking cognizance of complaints filed by the opposition as well as the government? Actually, EC's uh, policy is not to be uh, proactive. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the MCC violation cases, they act only on complaint. And I think I share whatever opinion uh, my senior colleague, Dr. S.Y. Qureshi, has just expressed, that they have done enough. And uh, they have come out with the report of one month of uh, MCC inf mm -hmm. enforcement, which speaks uh, everything about it. No, but, you know, it's the contentious issues, Dr. Qureshi. For example, a few days ago, the opposition went and complained, saying the Prime Minister likened the Congress manifesto to the Muslim League. And this was an attempt to play up stoke religious sentiments. The EC stayed away. It seems as if there are some holy cows. The EC is not willing to touch a few individuals. How do you respond to that? Well, I'm not aware of uh, very, uh, all these specific cases. Uh, I'm uh, basing my opinion on uh, what I've seen in the media, uh, particularly the, uh, the this report and also the action which they have taken against the West Bengal, uh, West Bengal governor. The fact that, that uh, they are taking action within 100 minutes or something uh, and they're acting on opposition's uh, complaints. So that uh, does give hope. No, no, but they've but taken down, to, to give you an example, Dr. Qureshi, to give you an example, today Twitter has said that the EC has taken down posts where, the, where individuals have questioned the government on electoral bonds. Those posts are being taken down. Now, the charge is that you don't take down hate speech posts, but you take down posts, the election, why should the election commission ask for posts where people are criticizing the government stand on electoral bonds to be taken down? 
Yeah, I agree. I agree with you because the criticism of the government, uh, of course, is at this point, all opposition parties will be making criticism of the government all the time. So everything should be taken off. So, but uh, in any case, you know, when action is taken in the model court, we must have full facts before us. Uh, since uh, Rawat and I don't have the facts in front of us, so we can't give very specific advice. But generally, okay. you're right. Uh, Prama Fesi, uh, just because the electoral bonds were criticized, uh, those posts were uh, taken off, uh, it does sound questionable. Okay. Uh, the one issue, Mr. Rawat, which is continuously, uh, continuously roiling is that of EVMs. Are we very clear and the matter is before the Supreme Court at the moment, the court itself has said, why should we be completely disregarding uh, a system which according to the courts has worked, uh, that of electronic voting machines? What was it like during ballot paper time? Are you satisfied with that or do you believe that there is a case to, at least for this one election, ensure 100% counting of the VV pads or the verified paper trail just so that everyone knows that this election is at least... Uh, uh, in terms of counting, there are no discrepancies. Uh, I don't think that 100% count uh, universally for the whole country uh, will do anything uh, better uh, because the Election Commission consulted the Indian Statistical Institute, our premier institution, as to how many polling stations VV pads left should be counted for the whole country. And they said a sample of 479 will be good enough. Mm -hmm. Election Commission is already counting VVPAT slips for almost 21,000 polling stations VVPAT because five per polling station, mm -hmm. according to the Supreme Court judgment, they are implementing, which is enough. And then there is a provision in the rules that if any uh, uh, candidate or party is dissatisfied in any constituency or with a number of polling stations, they can uh, complain to the returning officer and returning officer has powers to count 100% VVPAT slips of that constituency or that many polling stations, which, whichever has been complained upon. So all these provisions are there and those, those are sufficient checks. Uh, Dr. Qureshi, do you agree that uh, the way the system is, we don't need to change it? The matter is before the Supreme Court, several uh, uh, public uh, uh, civil, civil society groups have gone and questioned the need for uh, and, and, and believe there should be 100% verified paper trail. Well, uh, you know, the, Rajiv, uh, we have to think out of the box, and I have mentioned in several of my presentations and in articles, there, there is something in between 100% and uh, only 5 uh, per uh, assembly constituency. And what I have been suggesting, you are a cricketer yourself, and uh, most of India is cricket fan. I have been uh, suggesting that instead of counting 100% or even counting 5, I say only count 4, and which are those 4? The two runners up, because they are likely to be affected if there is cheating by the winner. The two runners up should be allowed to put their finger on suspected machines. Now you go to the third empire only when you suspect a decision. If randomly 5% decisions are reviewed by the third empire, you'll get nothing. It's only where you are suspicious. So if only suspicious machines are counted, which will bring down the numbers, but the credibility will increase. And in fact, somebody suggested one improvement on my suggestion. They said, let every candidate who has not forfeited his deposit, which means 1% of the candidate, uh, which uh, means uh, instead of four machines, maybe eight, 10 machines will be counted. So that will bring in a lot of satisfaction. That is something which should be considered. Okay. In any case, anything that we do has to be done on a pilot basis, at least try it on a pilot basis. Can I though ask both of you in conclusion, is there a level playing field? Should we... Uh, do we accept that this is an election, particularly because of money power, particularly because of media power, where you've got a Ferrari on one side and you've got bicycles on the other? This is a comparison that an author made that you've got an election where you've got Ferraris on one side versus a bicycle on the other. Do you agree, Mr. Rawat, that this is an election where because of money power, because of media power, it's not a level playing field, yes or no? Should the election commission look at it? One party is spending much more than the others. Much One party has more access to media than the others. Actually, election commission has lo no locus standi to look at that. Resourcefulness of different parties is not in their domain. They have to provide level playing field whenever somebody approaches to them. 
that whatever complaints come to them about violations and about uh, disturbing level playing field are dealt with sternly for all sides uniformly. You know, you're, you're saying that, but the fact, Dr. Qureshi, very simply, we are in the silence period between now and Friday when the first round of polling is there. You're not supposed to openly campaign in those constituencies, but you'll have all the leaders of the country, Mr. Modi, Rahul Gandhi, all the others, Mamta Banerjee, uh, going across their states or the country, campaigning while polling is going on in a neighboring constituency. Are you okay with that? What happened ever no. in a silent period then? Quite right. You know, absolutely, Rajiv, this has been a problem which we have been considering for the last 10-15 years, that in this age of electronic media, earlier, uh, you know, we would put a ban that the newspaper will not be circulated in that particular district constituency, but that kind of restriction cannot be placed on electronic media. Therefore, what we need to consider is a basic reform, which I've been suggesting that the seven multiple phase election has to be reconsidered now. We used to do it to save lives, but there are hundred other measures we have taken to make elections safe, uh, violence-free. Now, one day election is the answer because in social media explosion age, the phased election and pro pro prolonged election is creating more problems than it has solved in the past. You know, you made an important suggestion. We keep talking about one nation, one election that the government, if you're going to have one election, then have it in one phase rather than yes. stretch it over seven phases, because that's where the field can get skewed. That's at least an interesting suggestion. I don't know whether that will be implemented, but I sometimes look at my home state of Maharashtra, 48 seats, no history of poll violence, and yet a five-phase election. Is that a level playing field? We leave that question blowing in the wind for now. But for now, O.P. Rawat and Dr. Qureshi for joining me and taking my questions. Thank you very much. Now, as I said, all the focus on Friday. And Friday, remember, we'll see big states, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Bengal, Maharashtra, all going to the polls. A lot of focus this time is on the UP election as always, because the road to Delhi often leads through Lucknow. Today, UPK Ladke, as they were called during the 2017 assembly elections, Rahul Gandhi and Akhilesh Yadav held a joint show of strength in the state. Both leaders training their guns at the BJP. Rahul Gandhi even claiming that the NDA will only win 150 seats. Remember, the BJP has said, Char so par is their war cry this election. The UPK Ladke failed in 2017. Can they pass this time? Take a look. UPK Ladke, not quite the youthful duo of 2017 anymore, are back. Congress MP Rahul Gandhi and Samajwadi Party Chief Akhilesh Yadav made their first joint appearance in the Lok Sabha election on a day campaign ended for the first phase of polls that covers eight seats in Uttar Pradesh. Their late entry into the arena has befuddled political pundits as the road to Delhi, many say, is through India's most populous state. But that is not surprising, given that the Congress still hasn't revealed if any of the Gandhis will fight from the family seats of Amethi and Raiburedi. Look, after Amethi, the Congress President's decision is to do whatever I will get the order, I will do it. In their first joint press meet, Rahul and Akhilesh highlighted caste census as a major plank. The two claimed electoral bonds had busted Prime Minister Narendra Modi's clean image. In dates, pay paisa diya gaya, kisko diya gaya? जब ये डेटा मांगा गया, उसको भी किसने रोका? Clear, clear सी बात है. ये Prime Minister का vision है. इसको स्ट्रीट लेवल पे एक्सटॉर्शन किया कहा जाता है इलेक्ट्रल बॉन्ड ने इनका बैंड बजा दिया भारतीय जनता पार्टी सभी भ्रष्टाचारियों का गोदाम बन गई द रियूनियन ऑल्सो केम ऑन अ डे द कंट्री सेलिब्रेटेड राम नवमी जय श्री राम जय श्री राम जय जय श्री राम the BJP is highlighting the construction of the Ayodhya Mandir as one of its government's achievements, not just in Uttar Pradesh, but across the country. After 500 years of waiting, the 
भगवान राम अपने भव्य मंदिर में विराजमान हुए हैं फिर कांग्रेस के लोग तब कहते थे राम हुए ही नहीं और अब क्या कहते हैं कहते हैं राम तो सबके यही है इन लोगों का दोहरापन ये दोहरा चरित्र है The occasion was not lost on Congress leader Priyanka Gandhi Vadra, who took out a road show in Saharanpur on Wednesday. She too had a message on Ram Navmi. This country's religion, the country's devotion, the country's devotion to 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 Do you limit the Saffron Party's tally in the state? That remains a key question in Mission 2024. With bureau report and video journalist Pradeep Gupta, this is Mosmi Singh in Muzaffar Nagar for India Today. So it's UP ke ladke versus the BJP's double engine in Uttar Pradesh. Modi juggernaut is it really unstoppable in UP as many pollsters suggest? Or does the India bloc have a game plan that can spoil the show for the BJP? On my face off tonight, Mohan Kumar Mangalam, Congress's spokesperson, and Sanju Verma, national spokesperson of the BJP. To you, Mohan Kumar Mangalam, first. UP ke ladke, it was hyped up in 2017. It didn't go anywhere. The cycle was bust, and so was the Congress's hand. Has anything changed in seven years? If anything. Many believe that Mr. Modi, with Yogi Adityanath, have even become stronger in seven years. I think uh, that's a matter of perspective, uh, Rajdeep. If you look at even from uh, fourteen to nineteen, the number of seats they won in UP actually went down. And yes, Yogi came back with a bigger majority in his second election. But if you look at the issues that are pervading this election around unemployment, around exam leaks, around the caste census that we're bringing to the fore. they don't have responses for any of these issues and i know the prime minister said that ye flop picture hai ye do ladkon ki picture pehle bhi dekh chuke hain but 1975 mein bhi ek do ladkon ki picture nikli thi jo flop thi which was called shole jo fir itihas rach gayi so let's not count i, I don't think the prime minister should count his chickens before they hatch i think there is a long way to go right now and i think he made the mistake of pulling the trigger on the ram mandir way too early because that's not an issue that is resonating anywhere on the ground anymore So, if the prime minister has to go to the electorate in UP, mm -hmm. I really don't know what issue he's going to them with. Can I, uh, Sanju Verma? That's an interesting perspective. The BJP put a lot of focus hype, at least in the early month of January, on the Ram Mandir. Most polls now are showing Ram Mandir is not the number one issue, not even in Uttar Pradesh. It's unemployment and rising prices, and that's given the opposition hope that maybe there are little. green shoots of change out there how worried should the bjp be even the prime minister today seem to focus more on mandir and not on naukri or mahangai rajdeep always great to be on your show uh, first and foremost uh, jai shri ram to you rajdeep jai shri ram to your uh, audience and happy ram navmi to everybody and uh, jai shri ram, ram navmi to... madam my congress counterpart also on the other side jai shri ram sanju verma ji yeah. now can, can we <laughs> get back to the yes. question which is the real Are key you? let's not get diverted by ram rajdeep ram ka naam lene se koi divert nahi hota aapka focus aur sharp ho jayega Achha. ram ka naam liya kariye din mein at least panch bar liya kijiye prabhu ram ka naam now let me come to the main point now let me come to the main point with rajdeep i don't know we always have this camaraderie uh, you know very quickly double engine sarkar so first i will say what has prime minister modi done because as rajdeep sarbe sai says state elections are different from lok sabha elections so pehla jo thappa lagega lotus par jo chhap lagega voter ka that will be based on what has modi delivered what has modi delivered modi has delivered 12 crore toilets modi has delivered 33 crore ayushman cards modi has delivered 1 313 crore uh you know uh water connections via har ghar jal modi has opened one unicorn every 9 days in 2022 one unicorn opened every 29 days in 2021 thanks to narendra modi four crore houses have been built under pm awas yojana thanks to narendra modi 10 crore women have got ujjwala gas connections 
thanks to narendra modi one college opened every two days one university opened every week mm. and thanks to narendra modi one iit and iim opened every year thanks to narendra modi 43 crore loans were processed under mudra yojana of which 30 crore beneficiaries were women alone thanks to narendra modi you have the purvanchal express way thanks to narendra modi the uttar pradesh defense corridor passing through aligarh and chitrakoot is going to become a reality thanks to narendra modi earlier there were only one and a half airports functional in uttar pradesh today you have airports which are either complete or coming up in varanasi in jaipur in kushinagar in chitrakoot in azamgarh so on and so forth thanks to narendra modi earlier there were only 74 airports in india today there were uh, there are 149 airports thanks to narendra modi earlier only 21000 kilometers of railway line were electrified today that number is 64000 kilometers and thanks to narendra modi today more than 3 crore senior citizens benefit from atal pension yojana and thanks to narendra modi more than 2 crore girls and women benefit from sukanya samriddhi yojana Man, if we go to any more modi, okay so you are so you are saying you are saying last it's not point. it's not about ram mandir it's about what you claim are your concrete achievement mohan kumar mangalam uh, sanju verma has led out such a long list of thank you <laughs> thank you notes to narendra modi Thanks Short of Narendra saying that Narendra Modi, Modi thank no, you thank that you Narendra are a, Modi. okay. Thank you, you know this is Raji. thank you Modi I, show. But you want to respond because this is you see the BJP is working on two tracks. There's one which is the Hindutva track. There's also a parallel track of a Vikshit Bharat. They claim they are building India towards a Vikshit Bharat, and in a state like Uttar Pradesh, they are also using their plank of law and order in particular to say look. we are offering you better law and order now than was offered when the samajwadi party was in power rajdeep that's a state subject why is that even an issue right now that is something that i think maybe you can no are you saying are you saying better. a vidhan sabha election no, is very no, no. different to a general election yes 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 i think mr yogi if anything might reap dividends if that is true as you say it is now in terms of what mr modi has done of course sanju ji rattled off a whole number of things but i i thought she would be more specific to uttar pradesh because that's what we're talking about mm -hmm. she took the nation as a whole mm -hmm. here's i i'll uh, i'll offer you a point here rajdeep which is that if indeed mr modi and mr yogi are so confident about gaining in the uttar pradesh and doing even better than they did last time why are they hesitating to announce the candidature of whoever they want to nominate to the seat of rai bareilly and why are they not making up their mind about bhushan saran singh is he that important to their victory i mean why haven't they announced his seat yet those are the only two seats i think that are remaining for them to announce no, and bridge bhushan saran singh in particular no no i'm saying that my point here is that mm -hmm. if mr modi has done so much if mr yogi is so unassailable his position is then why are they dithering on announcing their candidates for these two seats okay why, can i can if, i just if, stop if you for a moment can i just yes. stop you for a moment to put out a clip of rahul gandhi is also seemingly dithering on whether he will contest from amethi or not this question was asked to him in the press conference this is how he responded then i want your response mohan mujhe pehle hi do teen bjp wale questions pata lag jate hain to wo wo to guaranteed puche jayenge to unke liye main tyar लोग तो गुजरात छोड़कर पीएम बनने के लिए बनारस आते हैं आप बाय नाइट चले गए तो क्या अमेठी या रायबरेली ये, 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 ये बीजेपी वाला क्वेश्चन है ये पसंद का सवाल पहले ओपनिंग ओपनिंग बॉल ओपनिंग बॉल बीजेपी क्वेश्चन वेरी गुड शाबाश देखिए अमेठी की बात कांग्रेस का डिसीजन है जो भी मुझे ऑर्डर मिलेगा मैं वो करूंगा सी मीटिंग हमारे हमारी पार्टी में सी सी मीटिंग में यह डिसीजन लिए जाते हैं बट पहला बीजेपी का क्वेश्चन गुड क्वेश्चन थैंक यू सो वाई इज राहुल गांधी देन ऑल्सो डिदरिंग टू कॉन्टेस्ट फ्रॉम अमेठी मिस्टर कुमार मंगलम He is not dithering. He didn't contest last time, and I think there is a huge groundswell wanting him to come back and contest in a meeting. So there is a question hanging so in the air. We still have lost time. Lost last time. You know, saying the time he went to yes, yes, sorry, my bad. He contested with both seats. This time he might or might not contest a meeting. But as he himself said, one, there is a lot of time to make that decision. A meeting is not going in this phase. Why not was so that decision was made and he's standing there. We'll find out in due course when we get to the CEC in our party, as he rightly said. So where that decision will be made on who is contesting for a meeting? There is no dithering here. 
he very rightly put it that in our party, the decision really will be taken at the CEC level, where the Congress president, Mr. Kharge, will have a much bigger voice. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Sanju Varma, you all continuously target Rahul Gandhi. The truth of the matter is, Rahul Gandhi has every right to decide when he wants to contest from Amiti. It's possible he'll do it after why not. Is the BJP a little overconfident? The one thing that can defeat any political force is overconfidence. The belief that, you know, Samajwadi Party and Rahul Gandhi together can't touch the BJP. Is the BJP being a little overconfident, ma'am? You know, Rajiv, that's a very interesting question. And I will just say this. And by the way, I want to congratulate you. Uh, that was a fabulous interview of you eating ragi mudde, or rather swallowing ragi mudde along with Siddharamaya. No, that I was not an interview, that, that was just a clip for Instagram. Yeah, Unfortunately, the BJP IT clip. cell called it an interview. There was a separate saab, interview, we ran it last night. Saab, you should try mudde, Sanjuji, it's very nice. Uh, you should also try ragi mudde, but God, can please, ma'am, can we focus, can we focus on my focusing. question? I'm focusing on your question, Rajdeep. Don't get so agitated. Okay. Come on. Why okay. is it that you're so uppity and itchy? BJP ko kuch bolti nahi to Rajdeep sir ke saath talwar lekar ek dam you know you want to enter the maidan. Jangya maidan nahi hai, bhai sir. Ye jangya maidan nahi hai. Okay, now let me answer your query. You know, Rajdeep, I don't think the BJP is targeting Rahul Gandhi, but and now please don't interrupt me. I will tell you something which your audience needs to hear. I have been a, a management student. And during my MBA days, we were told something. You know, management guru Philip Kotler. There's a famous saying of Philip Kotler. The biggest disservice. Dhyan se sunye. The biggest disservice you can do to a failed product is to not take it off the shelf and keep launching and relaunching it. Ye product expire ho chuka hai. There are no buyers for this product. There are no takers for this product. But you continue to market this product. Are bhai sahab, jab product strengths nahi hai, marketing se kuch nahi hoga. Ye Sanju Varma nahi, ye bade vidwan Philip Kotler keh gai hai. Now for whom I meant this? I meant this for Rahul Gandhi. 54 out of 59 big and small elections under Rahul Gandhi's mentorship slash tutelage, the Congress has lost in the last 10 years. Problem, kiski hai? Log kisko iska zimmedar samajte? Bhaiya Modi ji iske zimmedar hai. Rahul Gandhi lost a mate in 2019. Who is to be blamed? But more importantly, I was looking at some very interesting data and I'll tell you why we are not targeting Rahul Gandhi. Up to picture shuru hoi hai. I called out some data before Rajdeep Sardesai's debate because I know he likes the hard facts. Rajdeep Sardesai, uh, you know, you will be surprised to know that Rahul Gandhi's attendance as an MP from Vayanar is 51%. The national average is 79% and the average from Kerala for parliamentarians is 83% and Rahul Gandhi asked only 27 starred questions in parliament in the last five years of which only seven starred questions belong to his constituency why not? Matlab aapne poochhe sirf 27 sawal aur un 27 sawalo ne se sirf saaf only seven questions pertain to Vayanar, which is barely 26% of the overall questions asked, okay. which in you... any case was a small number. Okay, so you're, you know, you're today in form. It's your Ram Navmi spirit that has got you with all your data coming, packing in here on the show. But Mohan Kumar Amangla, there's a point there. You see, you have lost, including in Uttar Pradesh, all elections under Rahul Gandhi's leadership. He tried to do it on his own in 2012, did not succeed, then tried up with... Akhilesh Yadav did not succeed. 2022, his sister Priyanka Gandhi Vadra took charge. She did not succeed. Where does this leave, you know, the, 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 the duo? Where does this leave the Gandhis? Rajdi, first of all, let me say that uh, for uh, our competitors to be so obsessed with what they term to be a failed product that we are relaunching again and again. I mean, I've never seen a competitor be so concerned with their primary composition. It's obvious that every time Mr. Gandhi speaks, every time he says something, he draws attention to a subject, the BJP immediately deputes all its senior cabinet ministers to old press meets. And then they say, oh, there's a failed product you're launching again and again and again. As far as Wayanad is concerned, I guarantee you he's going to win with an even bigger margin than last time. And for the BJP, who often touts the prime minister's electoral successes, 
as the answer to all his follies or all the mistakes he's made or all the problems we have. I'm sure she can understand when I would do the same when she points out to some number of questions asked or no, otherwise. But, but the general now election, to your point, now to your Kumar question. Mangla to your will question. appreciate to, to win question. the general election, the route is through UP, not through Wayanad and Kerala. So if Rahul exactly. Gandhi really wants to take on the BJP, That's, he's going to have to say, bite the bullet. I, uh, Rajdeep, you're saying that if Mr. Gandhi doesn't stand in a Methi, then we cannot win the national election. The India Alliance will not win. Is that the claim you're making? I'd say that's rather unfair. Okay. And I'd also say that we have had prime ministers in the past who have not come from the state of Uttar Pradesh. It's not and about prime ministers. It's BJP's about that, it's about reviving the numbers. Congress in UP. But just Last listen thing. in, listen in the for a moment to Priyanka are, Gandhi. Yeah. Well, Priyanka Gandhi Vadra was on the campaign trail. Our correspondent Moshmi Singh caught up with her. I want you to listen and then I'll get final comments. मो तरफ से राम की बात हो रही है प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी और योगी आदित्यनाथ भी राम की बात कर रहे हैं राम आएंगे और पूरा उस तरीके से तो किनके राम सही हैं क्या राम सियासत में आने चाहिए राम देखिए राम एक ही हैं असल राम भक्त असल राम भक्त वो है जो सत्य के पथ पर चलता है चाहे वो कोई भी हो किसी भी धर्म का हो किसी भी जाति का हो वही राम भक्त है जो सत्य को पकड़ता है और सत्य के पथ पर चलता है जहां तक मैं देख रही हूं भाजपा की सरकार ने एक सत्य का पथ नहीं चुना है क्योंकि जनता के सामने सत्य नहीं आ रहा है और मैं इतना कहूंगी कि मोदी जी के सामने भी इस देश की सच्चाई आज दिख नहीं रही है उनको मोदी जी को ये दिख नहीं रहा है कि इस देश का जो आम आदमी है देश का गरीब है देश का किसान है देश की गरीब महिला है कितना तरस रही है कितना तड़प रही है कितना तड़प रहे हैं लोग क्योंकि महंगाई आसमान छू रही है बेरोजगारी बढ़ गई है कम नहीं हुई है और मुझे ताज्जुब होता है कि दस सालों के लिए सरकार में रहे हैं इनके पास इतनी सत्ता है अपार सत्ता है ये खुद कहते हैं अपने मियाँ मिट्टू खुद बनते हैं कहते हैं कि अपने मुंह मियाँ मिट्टू कहते हैं कि इस देश पूरी दुनिया में सबसे बड़े मोदी जी हैं भाजपा के नेता कहते हैं ठीक है मोदी जी के पास इतनी सत्ता है अपार सत्ता है तो अगर इतनी सत्ता है तो दस सालों में रोजगार क्यों नहीं बढ़ाए महंगाई क्यों नहीं घटाई Final word, therefore, from you, uh, Sanju Verma. Does Priyanka Gandhi Vadra worry you any more than Rahul Gandhi? Rahul Gandhi, you decoded Priyanka Gandhi Vadra, maybe more articulate and hitting at uh, Prime Minister Modi and his claims to be the genuine Ram Bhakt. Okay, Rajiv. Now I don't wish to be heckled. I am not going to take that uh, beaten path and say, "Oh, Priyanka Vadra has nothing to her credit apart from the long nose which she has inherited from her grandmother Indira Gandhi." I will speak on facts. Facts are this. प्रियंका वड्रा ने कहा महंगाई आसमान छू रही है तो प्रियंका वड्रा जी ध्यान से सुनिए द इन्फ्लेशन फॉर मार्च इज एट न्यू लो ऑफ 4.85 पॉइंट कोर इन्फ्लेशन 3.1 पॉइंट फ्यूल इन्फ्लेशन अ नेगेटिव 1.69 परसेंट यस माइनस 1.69 परसेंट अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट फॉर एफ वाई ट्वेंटी एट अ रिकॉर्ड लो ऑफ थ्री और प्रियंका वड्रा जी बड़ी जल्दी दस सेकंड में सुनिए 1.75 crore free gas connections given in Uttar Pradesh alone under Pradhan Mantri Ujjwala Yojana. 56 lakh houses built under PM Avaaz Yojana in Uttar Pradesh alone. 2.75 crore toilets given under Swachh Bharat Yojana in Uttar Pradesh alone. 2.35 crore tap water connections given under Har Ghar Jal Yojana in Uttar Pradesh alone. 17 lakh hawkers have benefited under the PM Swanidhi Yojana in Uttar Pradesh alone and the big daddy of all, 15 crore people. Kitne? 15 crore log har mahine from Uttar Pradesh alone are the beneficiaries of Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana. Or don't forget ki jab aap log sarkar mein thay, aap ke mitra sarkar mein thay, one minute. The dude of sugarcane farmers, the dude of sugarcane just a second, I beg of you. The dues of sugarcane farmers was 38,000 crore, which is what Yogi Adityanath inherited in 2017. Today, we have lost 56,000 crores worth of dues of sugarcane farmers along with bonuses. Okay, you, and sugarcane is the biggest industry in the You made Western your point, ma'am. You've replied to Priyanka Gandhi Vadra. Relax now. I will leave it to the voters of Uttar Pradesh to judge. Are?
Yes, Babon, you'll get 20 seconds. Otherwise, you'll also complain. Go ahead. Shanti so, Paljas say, I won't even use the entire 20 seconds. I'll say this election is about whether the voter is going to trust Mr. Modi to solve their problems. If you listen to Sanju, there are no problems. Poverty is not a problem. Unemployment is not a problem. Price rise is not a problem. The voters are saying otherwise. That is precisely what you survey you take. Sanju, not fair. Okay. Come on. I didn't interrupt you. Okay. So all I'm saying is that it is going to boil down to there are problems. There are problems on the ground. They're there for everybody to see. I mean, maybe not for people who don't have those issues, but the majority of the population is saying these are the issues. So it, it's going to rest on whether they believe Mr. Modi is going to help them solve these or not. Okay. Regardless Let's leave it there, Mohan. Mohan and Sanju Varma, I appreciate both of you joining us. As I said, the road to Delhi leads through Lucknow, which is why this will be one battle that will be closely watched in 2024. Now, another battle that unfortunately should be watched carefully for different reasons is not being looked at. But we will tonight on News Today. Manipur goes to the polls in two phases starting on Friday. This is a state which has seen more than 200 people dead in terrible ethnic violence. Hundreds of people still live in Manipur in the Kuki Maite divide in relief camps. Is elections therefore at all on the mind of Manipur's residents? Take a look. Manipur, a state on the boil. Ever since ethnic violence started last year, the Meiti and Kuki Zomi communities have been at daggers drawn. There are sporadic incidents of violence even now. The latest on Saturday when gunfight broke out between two rival groups at the tri-junction of Kangpokpi, Ukrul and Imphal East districts. The state with two Lok Sabha seats will vote in two phases on April 19 and 26, but political activity is yet to peak. While Rahul Gandhi kicked off his Bharat Joro Nyay Yatra from Manipur, Home Minister Amit Shah held his first election rally on Monday. Hundreds of displaced people are still in camps. Elections are the last thing on their minds. India Today visited the Akampat relief camp where people in large number were brought in from Moray and Churachandpur. I think it is not the right time for election in Manipur because uh, all the people and the citizens of Manipur have not uh, been in a stable mind because of the conflict. Even if I say that it is not the right time for election, it is going to happen. Uh, so I think it will. I think it is better uh, uh, to focus on who who our great leaders will be, uh, because it is democracy. So we have the choice to not uh, give a vote to any of them. In Manipur's famous Ima Market, probably the only one in the world run entirely by women, there is a deafening lack of enthusiasm towards elections. <laughs> Intentionally crisis to क्या करें अब अभी चुनाव के समय आया है चुनाव के fully forcefully impose किया है ये चुनाव ये election forceful है चुनाव के लिए हम क्या करें नहीं चाहिए हमें ये चुनाव Many civil society bodies representing the Kuki Zomi community have announced a boycott of the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. Many in Manipur have decided to sit out this round. With Babi Shireen, Bureau Report, India Today. Joining me now is uh, Pradeep Fanjubam, one of the senior most editors in Imphal. Appreciate your joining us, Pradeep. It seems to me that Manipur is the forgotten state. Very little talk about elections there. It's taking place against the backdrop of violence. We've seen videos even a few days ago coming of people being brutally killed. What's your sense? Can an election in Manipur really be free and fair when there is still so much of violence going on, people still living in relief camps? Yeah, that is uh, very much the reality here, that there's lots of violence and also lots of enmity between different, the, the, the two different communities. 
And I miss that when you hold an election, there's going to be a, a lot of coercion, a lot of uh, violence, fear. So free and fair election may not be totally possible. But I, I, I was also arguing elsewhere how difficult it would be actually to postpone for, for the, the election for two seats. Because by the time, if you don't hold it now, you hold it after two months, there's going to be a government. And then it's not going to be fair again because you have, uh, the opposition will be fighting whoever is in power. So it's, I, I think there is a, a catch-22 situation. You go the other way, that, that has a catch. You stay here, the, there's another catch. So it, it, I think uh, there's some bit of compulsion of holding this election now. But, but there are many cookie groups that have appealed to publicly boycott the elections, express their anger in the manner in which uh, uh, the situation in Manipur has been handled over the last year. The wounds seem very law, uh, raw. The chief minister says all is under control. Home minister says situation will improve. But the reality on the ground seems very different. How do, uh, does one address these concerns? Yeah, I think the focus has been on the elections only, not not the problem here. I think uh, the election itself should have addressed this, that uh, that this solution is going to be there, and also in the different manifestos of the of the of the uh, different parties, this should have been mentioned. No, no, I, what I see now is that in the manifesto, you are seeing the larger picture only, especially the BJP manifesto, which says which says which is talking about you know, the uh, highways and infrastructure. Without those larger pictures are okay, but sometimes you have to also be taking care of the short-term kind of emergencies, which is what Manipur is facing at the moment. And as I say, in the long run, we're all dead. So in the short, we have to take care of the short run. You have to be also taking care of the short, larger picture, okay. But there are but there, there are very immediate uh, short-term pictures which you can't uh, just just uh, right away. And I think that's what's happening in Manipur at the moment. It, it's it's trauma is not being seen or understood by the by by the establishment but has any effort been made then to use this election to bridge the divide between metes and cookies or do you fear that an election of this kind will only exacerbate the divide between the two communities i wish the election had addressed this problem but otherwise you know the, in the civil society there are people who want this and trying to bridge a gap, bridge a gap but it's not going to be easy, you know, when you are into that conflict and you see casualties and those casualties are, are, are accentuating the angers on both sides and it's, it's going to continue. So it's going to be difficult, but somebody has to make a beginning. And I wish it was the politicians who, 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 who are going to do it. But it seems like it's not going to be the case that uh, in the election manifesto, this thing is not reflected at all. How this problem is going to be solved, it, it's seen only as, as a boil, you know, which, which can be taken care of anytime. Is not seen as a disease which can actually consume the health of that particular uh, community or that particular state. And, and right now, what's happening is Manipur is in that very, I mean, uh, critical state of uh, illness, which is uh, uh, being neglected, which is being seen as something minor, something which can be taken care of later. And I think this is quite unfortunate. Uh, you know, a final question: There are people who will be voting from relief camps who've suffered enormous loss of lives, property on both sides of this ethnic divide. Do you therefore, uh, looking into the future, see a healing touch at all? Or are we looking at Manipur now caught in an endless trap and cycle of violence, uh, Pradeep? Oh, I, I don't think uh, anything can be there permanently, but uh, the trauma should not be, should be accentuated. It should be, there should be efforts to actually control this and also patch up the differences. You know, so, so many things uh, happen because of misunderstanding. Those things should be cleared. And then, you know, you, uh, in, a, in, a, in a spirit of give and take, you come to a resolution which is acceptable to all. And also it has to be understood that both parties, the, both the parties fighting mm -hmm. have their own insecurities. Both those, all those insecurities have to be addressed. We just can't say one side is uh, suffering, the other side is not. As, as you have also said, said, suggested, this is uh, the trauma is being faced by both sides, and you know the in the in that common suffering, I think uh, that redemption should come about. That I... in, in in the realization of that uh, the same suffering that one party is suffering, the other party is also doing that. If both parties recognize that, I think the reconciliation can can come about. My final question, though, a first step towards reconciliation surely is accountability. There's been so much of violence. And yet so few people have been uh, punished. A zero FIR has just been filed 
uh, in a case of horrific videos of people being killed or village defense committee uh, committee members from the cookie community recently would you agree that an election without accountability and justice will never ensure true peace and reconciliation yeah to, uh, that is there but then in a, in a conflict situation these kind of things are i mean you have the abnormal kind of situation which becomes normal that you have keep you have been seeing all this kind of uh, atrocities on both sides and then you somehow you know you, you tend to say this is part of the part of life that kind of thing which is which is very unhealthy people should be coming out and objecting to any kind of atrocities against anybody on either side and that kind of thing either because uh, people are uh, a little fearful or else no you you are exposed to violence violent situation and then you are party party in a sense that you are actually immersed in that situation you become somehow to be influenced by one side or the other and i think that's actually a very dangerous thing and and this danger is what uh, uh, should be addressed and uh, uh, the in the elections people are thinking only of winning uh, the elections uh, and not winning the hearts of the, and and the minds of those people who are actually the, uh, the victims very well put elections are about for many politicians only about winning votes not the hearts and minds of people manipur's hearts and minds need to be one and it's an unfortunate situation that it remains india's forgotten state pradeep panjubam for joining me on the show tonight thank you very much this ground report comes from chatisgarh it's deadliest encounter that took place yesterday in a fierce joint operation a team of bsf and district reserve guards gunned down 29 naxalites including some senior cadres in kake district a large cache of weapons including ak 47 rifles were also recovered we have tonight's ground report from kake biggest encounter in chatisgarh 29 maoists including one of their top leaders shankar rao gunned down in a joint operation by the psf and the district reserve guard in chatisgarh kankar district on tuesday apart from being the biggest anti naxal operation in the history of chatisgarh the security forces have managed to script history in terms of recovery the cache of arms and ammunition that have been recovered is certainly unprecedented ak47s in sas 303 self loading rifles and 9 mm service pistols along with carbine and several uh, ied devices have been recovered from the spot ye weapon sabhi police aur suraksha balon ko se hi loota gaya hai pehle aur jaise automatic weapon se isme identification numbers bhi rehte hain to isme pata chal jayega ki kahan se ye hathiyar loota gaya hai both bjp and congress hail the success of the security forces kal chatisgarh mein suraksha balon ko badi safalta prapt hui hai chatisgarh police ka bhi sahyog jitna ichhni hai usse zyada hi mil raha hai mujhe pura vishwas hai ki combination aage bhi chalu rahega aur bahut kam samay ke andar modi ji ke netrutva mein hum desh se naxalwad ko ukhad phekenge former chief minister bhupesh baghel however was caught in a controversy as yet earlier in the election campaign pointed to alleged fake encounters by security forces bharti janata party shasan kal mein phaji encounter hota raha giraftariyan hui hai abhi phir se 4 mahine mein wo phaji encounter bhi mein bhi vriddhi hui hai aur phaji giraftariyan bhi naxali bata ke adivasiyon ko band karne ki लगातार जानकारी आ रही है कोई कैसे कह सकता है कि फर्जी मुद्दे ये कोई कैसे कह सकता है मतलब कहने वाले को एक बार सोचना तो चाहिए जवानों ने अपने जान की बाजी लगाकर जिस काम को किया है आप उनका अपमान करेंगे ये दुर्भाग्यजनक Maoism has haunted Chhattisgarh for years. In 2013, the entire state leadership of the Congress was killed in an attack that left 27 dead. Since then, the center and the state government have cracked down on red terror with an iron hand. With Sumi Keval Patel in Chhattisgarh, Bureau Report, India Today. And from that ground report, I leave you tonight with our good news today story, and it's a lovely story. Despite living in extreme poverty a son of a poor farmer from Bulandshehar Pawan Kumar has cracked the UPSC exam he was ranked 239 in the civil service exam and now intends to join the civil services the IS he hopes it's our good news today story it's a story of spirit 
and hopefully of the great Indian dream. Thanks for watching. Stay well, stay safe. Good night. Shubhratri. Jai Hind. Namaskar. It's celebration at Pavan Kumar's house. The 24-year-old who went to Navodaya school in Buklana village in Buland Shahar and completed graduation from Allahabad University has cleared UPSC civil services exam with a rank of 239. Behind his success is the story of years of hard work by his parents and sisters. आई एस वाला बहुत बड़ी खुशी हुई है हमारी फैमिली वालों को हमारे गांव वालों को क्षेत्र को सबको बहुत बड़ी खुशी हुई है और पढ़ाई उसने बस इसी छप्पड़ में रह के बहुत कठिनाई से पढ़ाई करी हम सब हम तीनों बहन और मम्मी पापा हम सब मजदूरी करते थे खेतों में काम करते थे और उसकी पढ़ाई के लिए उसे सहयोग करते थे दे फॉन्टली रिमेम्बर हाउ दे सेव्ड मनी टू बाय अ मोबाइल फोन फॉर पवन मोबाइल उसको जो सेकंड हैंड दिवाया हमने मेरे को भैया नए के तो स्थिति नहीं है तो तीन हजार बत्तीस सौ को आयो हमें तो बहुत महंगा लगो ऐसे मानो जैसे तीस लाख बत्तीस लाख को पढ़ो सगरी बालक बड़े ने मेहनत करी भाई आपको मोबाइल दिवाओ ऑनलाइन पढ़ाई एक बाहर पढ़ाई जब जाके उसको आज मिल के तरके लगो रहे अपने हिले से पढ़ते रहे As laddus do the rounds, what is hard to miss is the chula in one corner of the house that is still used. Pavan's father says they opted to pay for his son's coaching instead of spending on gas refills. Gas udwala se connection ban gaye Modi ji ne diye. Ab unke liye paisa nahi gas ke liye. बच्चों की पढ़ाई के लिए करें इकट्ठे या एक हजार ग्यारह सौ में सिलेंडर भरवा में इतने में एक बालक की फीस की व्यवस्था करें पवन कुमार आई ए एस गोवन बुकलाना टाइटल फॉर एन इंस्पायरिंग रियल लाइफ स्टोरी ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टुडे